Hello and welcome to episode 21 of our Orkelovar campaign. In the last episode, we focused on trying to get some missions done. Uh, we have been falling, I think, a little bit behind of where we're supposed to be. So I was trying to kind of focus down and catch back up. And in the process of doing that, we were able to annex our vassal. Or kind of free. Time-wise, it was free, but it did cost a lot of Diplo points. And it put us at minus 999 Diplo points. And that's bad because a lot of our next missions require Diplo development in provinces. So we're going to have to kind of keep focusing on Diplo. Like all of our glass-owned provinces need to be 20 uh, production development. I think there was another one as well. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. Um, I'm not sure, but there was, there was something else that I also needed Diplo points for. Maybe we already completed it. I'm not sure. Uh, another thing that I have been mistaking for the past couple episodes. Okay, government reforms to offset the effects of the Horde curse. It, it, it is here. It is here. It's right here. Ensure workers' rights. Uh, labor reforms will be removed from Orgelivar. That's what we have from the Horde curse. So I just didn't read the words. I just looked at the numbers for the modifiers. And I was like, that's fine. But we'll go ahead and do this because that will give us an extra 5% goods produced on top of what we already have. So that is very, very nice. Now, with our money, we are saving up in order to... Well, what were we doing? I think we were going to build the next set of the dam. So we're going to save up for that. Uh, we do have an expedition, apparently. Where are you? You are up here. Uh, do we have people already in there? No, it's completely uh, unset. It's copper level danger and long length. So let's go ahead and get 10,000 troops and send them on up to do that. All right, cool. Now, we do have a couple things we can state up. So we'll state all of this up because there's no reason not to for the most part. We might be a little bit over our governing capacity. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, we'll ignore the wrong research. Not a big deal. All right, let's go ahead and send out the expeditionary party. Uh, start preparations. We will set the supplies. We'll preserve food and equipment here. And it's long, but it's only copper level dangerous. So let's raise the morale with some money. Uh, we'll get up to like 10, and then as for organization, we'll do it twice to get up to 145. That should be good. Uh, must have, oh, I should probably send them in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would probably be a good idea to actually send the troops. All right, there we go. So that will send them off, and they will do their thing. All right, Liza is threatening our trade. Not a big deal. Adventurers insult the clergy. Okay. So what we want to do is down in here, we want to get all this up to level or development level 11. Uh, the problem is we have devastation here because we got rid of some goblins. So what I think I'm going to do is encourage development and we're going to develop away all of the uh, devastation here. We're going to develop this one specifically to 10. That way I could build a fort. That way I can keep the rest of this prosperous. And then we're gonna build up prosperity in order to develop that. So it's a little bit cheaper because it is very expensive to develop in caves. So we wanna save as much cash as we can. Uh, an apparition appears. Again, we're just kinda of going through these at this point in the game, uh, but there's a ghostly spirit that uh, shows up, but they are old dwarven spirits. So we can just get a bunch of money and stuff from them. Uh, hold restoration. Yes, let's go ahead and do that. Verkul Kozanad, we will start that up. We will rebuild old Dwarvar rails as well. But yeah, they're already going deeper. All right. So, uh, new coin. Uh, we'll just take the inflation. So, right now, we are in a pretty good spot. Just kind of chilling out. We are slowly but surely converting things on over, which we will continue to do. Wandering husks. Go ahead and don't get poisoned, please. Uh, again, I don't want to upgrade that because I want to upgrade the dam. For instance, look at that. Segdir has taken out the person that was between us. So we now have a border with each other. But we have a fort built up on that border. So it's not all that big of a deal. Uh, I'm also going to lose the stability here. I will just stab up. I'd rather not lose the Diplo points. Like Diplo points are very, very valuable for us at the moment. And I'd really like to not just throw them away. If possible. That would that would be good. That would be preferable. Okay, so Goblin's Free Country. Okay, we have a decent amount of Diplo points right now. So let's go ahead and start looking at our other glass. So this here is in a trade company. So I think the best thing we could do here is find the one that gives development cost. I can never remember which one gives dev cost. Uh, is it the one at the bottom? 
No. I know that one of these gives dev cost. And I probably already looked over it. Defensive, trade power production efficiency, trade power production efficiency. Goods produced, goods produced, trade steering. There it is, development cost, 15. All right, go ahead and lock that in. All right, so that'll make that a little bit cheaper for us to develop. And again, this needs to get up to 20. There we go, so that takes care of that. And then the next one we'll do is Akatbar, and then so on and so forth until we get all of these up to 20 uh, Diplo development. Uh, old Battlefield in the cave. Uh, we gain a stability. Uh, countless squat skeletons of dwarves and tusk schools of orcs put pieced together. There was no clear victor. Uh, serves the savages. Okay, well, I mean, sure. I won't deny a free stability. Thank you very much. Always appreciate the free stab. All right, we're still getting rid of that. Deep Rothe, kill them for their meat. Very good. Yeah, and right now we're just, we're just kind of in a section where we uh, are waiting. I know that a lot of people want me to kind of reunite the whole serpent spine. I really don't think that this is the campaign to do that. Uh, there is a... Oh, damn, I start calling me. Huh? Where do I have a call? I don't know. Weird. Uh, hold on. I will get back to that thought in just one second. Let's go ahead and rebuild the next part of the dam. Yep, get that going. Rebuild old rails and dig off the tunger down a bunch more. Uh, as I was saying, there are a lot of people that want me to unite the whole Serpent Spine in this run. I don't think this is it because there is a work in progress mission tree for... Um, oh, the name is slipping my mind right now, but the Dwarven Empire. Because uh, right now there's not like a whole lot of content if you do end up actually reforming the Empire. And honestly, I, I really don't feel like fighting the command right now. Uh, and I would have to abandon all of my allies. And if I was going to go for a Serpent Spine Conquest... I would have proceeded in a much different way. Um, also, Orc Helivar is probably one of the worst people to do it with because you're stuck on a very edge instead of being somewhere a little bit more centralized that can expand in all directions. Not to say it's uh, impossible, even necessarily more difficult. Uh, it's just a little bit more of a hassle. Uh, but we do have another one of our inventions here, Artificer Inventions. Uh, growth beans. Farming equipment doesn't mean anything if the land itself is incompatible for your crops. Often the greatest obstacle to farming is the land being used. Soil conditions, as well as the weather, can spell doom for many crops if not carefully managed. Even if the food can grow, there's no guarantee that it will grow plentiful. An apple is hardly food if it is half the size of your hand. Growth beans, named as such for the peculiar shape of their containers, are not actually beans. The container can be rubbed apart using one's hands, releasing a fine powder that strongly enhances the potential of crops when applied to farmland consistently. All right, let's go for the next research. We'll go for mechanism again. And I don't know if we have enough. No, we don't. We don't have enough artificer capacity. This one takes 20 and I guess it's plus 15% national tax modifier. Uh, going deeper, okay. We have restored Vorkal Kozadan. Beautiful. So now this mithril hold is up and running. And I will go ahead and lower autonomy here as well. And we need to make sure that this is a very defended area because we may go to war with people up here. Uh, Rail Skulker, believe it or not, is actually alive right now. But ironically, uh, we are just one province away from possibly being able to go and deal with them, which is a little bit sad. Little bit sad. Uh, remnant Camp, okay. Great. I uh, remember this happened because... Or some Azdir broke their alliance with us because they wanted this uh, damn province. And then they got bodied by Vorin March, including losing a Dwarven hold. So good job on that, guys. The Dwarves were doing very, very well, but now the Dwarves are falling apart in the north. So that's that's great. Uh, treasure of Ethnir. Well, this looks different, different from uh, the regular things. All right. Uh, our chronicler has told us of a powerful dwarven sorcerer by the name of Ithnir, whose legend claims that he has hidden some of his treasure within these parts of the serpent spine. Often he tried to convince the expedition to search for the fabled riches, but often there were more pressing matters to attend to. Recently, however, following a time of a few expeditionary successes, our explorers are more and more inclined to finally search for it. 
Scouts have been sent out into the dark to search for signs of the wondrous. Mages are turning their wands to recognize magical signatures, and our chronicler is poring over his scrolls and parchments, looking for clues to the exact location. After five days, the scouts return, with no news of any signs of treasure, but over the course of the day, some mages pick up a trace of arcane energies leading down a vast crevice. Scouts are sent out to try and find a way down and up again, but there seems to be no path. One group who has reached the bottom of the crevice, obscured by darkness by repelling down some rope, reports that they have found an old crest of dwarven make. The iconography matches the time of Ithnir, and the emblem is linked to the infamous Wandsmith clan. Discussion about how to approach the matter has now ignited all over the place. Our engineers have proposed that we build a hoist to get soldiers and abjurers down to search for the treasure, while some soldiers would prefer to find a way down, arguing that there could be a slope down that has been eroded out of the stone over time. At last, the safer option has been chosen, and the soldiers search for a ways down. Fortunately, this path exists, and the entire expedition can descend into the canyon. It did not take the mages long to find a magically concealed wall behind which the horde of Ithnir gleams at us. Our soldiers ready their bags and chests when the chronicler speaks. There is, of course, the possibility that Ithnir might have cursed the horde in order to punish anyone trying to take it by force. The soldiers fall silent and look at the expedition leader for a decision. What shall we do? I mean, obviously we're going to take it. Uh, the curse has abated. Whether there was ever a curse on the gold in the first place is hard to say, but there was no magical effect upon seizing the horde. Even the most superstitious men soon agreed that there was no danger to the treasure, lifting their spirits and arguing what to do with the gold. This discussion is shut down quickly by the expedition leader, who reminds them that all loot goes to the coffers to be given to the contractor. The chronicler has become a hero overnight, finally turning our luck around again, ending the dry track without treasure. Gold is gold, and in the end, that's what counts. 0.5 morale, 300 loot. Hmm, cool. I haven't seen that event before. I like that one. It gives me more money. Uh, Harpy Lynn Dam. Next part is completed. We have a gelatinous menace. We will save our buddies. Cool. Make sure that we keep on colonizing here with our one colonist. Go ahead and core that up, and we'll save up to finish the third and last part of the dam. Because that would be very nice to uh, kind of get going. You are digging. Very good. There's some stability. Prosperity is increasing here. Astaire wants soldiers. Sure, we'll send some dwarven auxiliaries over to the humans. Why not? We will reelect. Very nice. Yeah, things are looking good. Uh, are there any other missions I need to be working towards? Just the glass one. Collapsing cave. Okay. Yeah, it's literally just the glass. All right. Well, let's go ahead and throw down the encourage development here. Get you to 20 development. And encourage development here. Get you. And we're not going to get to 20 on this one, unfortunately. But we're going to get it close. That's what matters in the end. As long as we get it close. Innovation wave. Okay, okay, okay. Hold digging in Shastun Deer. Yep, go ahead and get that started. The money spent on that is definitely worth more than the dam. Well, yeah, because I guess the dam would apply afterwards. Even if they... I don't know. It's fine. Uh, for some reason, we gained autonomy. Oh, right. Because we... We found remnants and we promised them that they could uh, hang out. Well, we got a thousand monies and 343 of each monarch point. So honestly, that's better than I think we were supposed to get. So I will not complain. Night of Blood and Fire. Okay, it's fine. Uh, let's use our diplomats here in order to improve with our neighbors. Because I know that people were a little bit mad at us at one point. Uh, they're not really mad at me anymore, though. Even though I took stuff inside the Empire. Alright, Sagdir asked for people, but I didn't give it to them, unfortunately. I, I kind of meant to. Orcs flee from country? Okay. Sure, I'll give you some sailors. How about that? Alright. Uh, I do want to build more troops, but we'll... Oh, wow. I can build 312,000 troops now? Huh. Didn't expect that one. That's a lot of dudes. That's a lot of dudes. Uh, we're just going to slowly but surely keep taking things away from the cartels here. Making them a little bit weaker, and a little bit weaker, and a little bit weaker. Go ahead and revoke them. We're now up to 52% crown land, which is super nice. Uh, that does max out our mill points. Before I spend that, let's go ahead and try and at least get this stuff up to 20. Are there any other glass that I have that's not... Oh, yep, this one. Yeah. Yeah, how long until this is done? I don't know if this is true or not. 50? Okay, then we'll wait until this is done uh, digging. Then it'll be super cheap, and then we can complete the mission. 
Elves block progress. Yeah, that's classic elves when you think about it. Uh, we'll go ahead and take the mill tech. It's fine. Hi ho, hi ho, bunch of development. We love to see that. And I can upgrade into swivel cannons. And we can start to go for the Great Dam, the third and final part. All right, cool. And that means that our digging will be faster now, I believe. I'm pretty sure that's what it does. I'm like 82.5% sure that's what it does, which honestly means that it probably doesn't. But hey, there's a chance. There's a chance that I'm right on this. Okay, I gotta be right every once in a while. I can't always be wrong, uh, though I do love to try and prove myself wrong on that occasion, I suppose. Now, we could consider a war against uh, Eliasna here. If only just to grab these two provinces for borders. That is something I might do. Simply because it's kind of ugly that they own this. No real reason that they should own it. Okay, hold digging operations. Admin tech. Yep, go ahead and take the admin tech. Uh, what hold can be dug? Arg Ordston. Okay, go ahead and dig that out more things that I'm allowed to state up. We'll go ahead and we'll state that up. And it said there was another thing I could state up, I thought. Oh yeah, it's, uh, it's this right here. Yep, we can't trade trade company because it's not in the empire anymore. Uh, I don't really care what Isterlor thinks of me. I'm gonna be real with you. Let's go ahead and pull you back and insult Eliza real quick. That way I can get up to over 50 power projection. And Booslar is... Okay, they're hostile. I was hoping they'd be friendly. Many jobs of a soldier. Ah, oh, it's getting the money. It's fine. It's fine. Colonial expansion? Sure. Sure. All right. That is another colony done. I, I was hoping that was going to be the... Uh, Gorbarad being dug out all the way. But alas, that is not to be, apparently. Alright, let's find a discipline guy here. Any chance for a discipline guy? Any chance? There we go. Get you up to level 5. And now we can begin to prepare for a couple of things. So, view catcher. Uh, simplest yet grace inventions of our time, able to capture images for printing in a single instant to be preserved former is revolutionary and its use is endless. From newspaper articles to preservation of heroic deeds to documentation of creatures unknown to simply capturing dear memories, the view catcher is popular already with much of the general populace. All right, cool. Uh, that's another artificer thing. Let's go ahead and do the next one. We'll go for a brilliant inventions this time. We'll switch it up a little bit. Is it is possible to run out of them. Not that I think we've run out yet, but we, we could be getting close. I know that there's also some inventions that are time gated behind certain uh, institutions spawning. Heated debates. Yeah, here's the money. Uh, missionaries arrive. Uh, yeah, follow the true faith. And there's manufactories, which we unfortunately did not get. Uh, Corvaria is continuing to fall apart. You love to see it. Love to see it. Are you done? Have you built it? No, we still only have the second stage. Still only have the second stage. We're just waiting on this to be done. Just waiting on this to be done. Then we can continue down our mission tree. Agenda is about to expire. You want a temple here? Oh, okay. You can build that out. Don't see a problem with that. Is our artificial capacity, like, good yet? No. It's still only nine. All right, so this is now 17 development. Well, what we're gonna do, we're gonna upgrade the fort first, build a couple buildings here, and then we will uh, dig it again. But most importantly, we can get that up to 20 and complete the mission codex of production. As we expected, our investigations of the glass works of Kenor taught us nothing we did not already know about the, the craft of glass making. However, we did learn how working conditions can impact the quality and quantity of finished products. If we were to improve conditions in our own workshops, production efficiency would increase. But such reforms would go against the dwarven tendency toward hoarding wealth for oneself and might anger some parts of the workforce. Better do it anyway. It's for their own good, after all. Glass Lord Worker Reform. Orkelivar has, be uh, Orkelivar has been reborn anew, and our people are emboldened by our success over the Horde curse to have slowly come to control most of our nation. 
Already, there are calls for even more sweeping reforms to workers' rights, particularly within the glass industry, as it is both our most important and most venerated position or profession. With the assistance of Orkelovar's Gnomish scientists and finance advisors, we have distilled all the research we previously conducted into Elan's glassworks and the lessons learned from the Horde curse into the most ambitious set of reforms ever attempted in our nation. Firstly, the glass industry will no longer be controlled by a select few. As a cornerstone of our economy, society, and culture, it is essential to Orkelovar and thus will be nationalized and completely owned by our administration. No longer will profits be siphoned into the pockets of the owners at the expense of the common worker. All profits from glass will be fed back into the state to fund our projects directly, and workers will receive a proportional and untaxed share of these profits, ensuring they are both incentivized to, and can benefit from, increased production. With the corrupt owners gone, we can standardize glass production, allowing many of the unreasonable standards and targets for glassworks to be lifted. We must be careful to prevent our workers falling into repetitive dullness, and so we will also allow the glass workers more personal freedom to choose how and what glass they produce, so long as it meets our quality standards. We will also foster a combination of both competition and cooperation in our workers. We will greatly incentivize the sharing of knowledge between glassworks and sponsor artisans to lead regular workshops for our glass workers to improve their craft. We will make leading positions within glassworks only available to those who can win a majority vote of confidence from the workers. This will improve cohesion in the glassworks and foster healthy competition between individual workers, which will drive them to produce glass of yet greater quality. As expected, these proposals are vehemently, are vehemently opposed by those that aim to deprive of power, a small but extremely influential cabal of top glasswork owners and traders who our people have dubbed the Glass Lords. Despite the reforms instituted in Orkelovar to crush monopolies and remove corruption, many of them maintain most of their power and influence by utilizing their positions as leaders in our foremost industry. As is common within the upper circles of dwarf kind, they are motivated only by greed and a poor change in any form. Already we have seen threats both economic and violent in nature as a response, and as we move forward with these reforms, they will only grow bolder. Many within our nation feel that the armed rebellion is an inevitability, and that the only question is when they will make their move. Our citizens have already seen the destructive effects of infighting and tire of conflict between our brethren. Thus, we must be prepared to swiftly crush any such attempts by glass lords, maintain the stability of our nation. So in any province that looks like that has glass, there are a bunch of separatists that are going to rise up. So let us stop drilling here and get our dudes to move into position where they don't have zero morale. <laughs> Uh, we don't need you. Alright, so we're in position in most places. Go ahead and let the peasants fire. Alright, can we stop both of these? I don't think so. So I will not force march. Besides, actually we can. Wow, we are fast. Look at that. Alright, no more rebel problems. Problem solved. Go ahead and start converting to the province, and we should be able to complete another mission, right? There's not the modifier Glass King Rebellion. Oh, there's gonna be more. Ah, that's fair. Still the increase, okay. Uh, tolerance sounds great. Antique machine, I will sell it. We will take Diplotech, and we could take Miltech super early. I'd rather just throw development down somewhere though. Uh, that's somewhere specifically being in a hold. But let's just not, you know, throw it away. Let's put it in a hold that will be useful for. Okay, perfect. The stair wants money. I can do that. Let's go ahead and build out to a 4040 stack here. We will start to scale up our military to prepare for wars in probably Bulwar. I think that's, that's where I'm going to want to... Uh, expand into. Maybe call in Segdir, give them land, and then try and split Bulwar down the middle. Though that is a bit difficult due to the fact that uh, the Saran is really where the value is and they're not going to want to share that. But I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, we have discovered some precursor ruins. While we'd not thought much of Gordhir's interland, it seems that the hubris of our dismissal has been a grave mistake. Research... Uh, recent surveying efforts in the region have revealed a mysterious, ancient, and exquisitely designed ruin. Further inspection dating it back to the time of the Precursors. Okay, cool. So now we get Precursor Relics here, which are super valuable. It is, of course, Jad, but not much we can do about that. Jad is a tough religion to root out. They are very devoted. Very, very devoted. Alright, look at that. Look at how Corvuria has just died. Like, they used to be pretty strong, but now they are just 
Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And there we go. The Harpulum Dam is now complete. The third stage. I'm pretty sure that's the last stage. I'm pretty sure. There's another one. There's a fourth part. Ah oh, man. Ah oh, man. I thought that was it. All right, fair enough. Uh, I need to develop. So let's just throw down some development and play. No, no, bad, bad Poey. Bad Poey. We specifically need all of these to be high development. 11, a full 11 development. So let's not just throw points down anywhere. Let's get them where they belong. Just right in here. And with Gorbarad getting to level five uh, after we get this building done, the because it's level four right now, right? Yep. Then that should help us out tremendously. Uh, we will also start to upgrade Bellward. Why not? Why not? Yeah, sure, Quarry. You can have access. Whatever. Proto industrialization. Uh, that's a lot of loans. I ain't gonna lie. That's a lot of loans that I I don't really know if I need to take. Uh, we do get one base production. I, I'm not gonna worry about it though. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of loans I'd take that I don't really need to take. Uh, am I in a disaster right now? No. How do I get rid of the uh, Glass King Rebellion? Oh, it's just time. 1660. Okay. Well, it is what it is. Can't really stop it, so. Guess we just ignore it. Put you up to 50, 40. Now we'll have a real military. That's actually very scary. Uh, new coin, we'll take the inflation, and you can get that. All right, there we go. All of our new troops are filing in, and we already have claims down over here. I think Kuzaram is going to be... Uh, is they going to be vassalized by Eliza? Who's Eliza allied to? Gelkalas and Kuzaram? Okay, well, Kumar can is guaranteed. Okay, so it really doesn't matter. No matter what we do, we have to fight Eliza. Uh, so I think we're going to... Just declare directly on them and fight their allies. Which, you know, is fine. So in order to do that, okay, we already have claims there. So we are prepared for that war. We'll start our Golden Age when we do that as well. Uh, I guess we go cheaper harsh treatment cost here. Though I don't think we need it. All right, Goblin Minority Purge. Cool. Start to drill. Uh, how many more troops can I have? A couple more. A couple more. We'll just build a bunch of infantry then for reinforcing fights and such. And we might want to build more forts out here. Like this is a mountain right here. This is a cave though. And then these are woods, highlands and woods. Hmm. Like I'm not really scared of Elias' military at this point in the game. Like we're pretty strong. Uh, what idea groups have they taken? Eco, defensive, exploration, and no quality. Yeah, nah. I'm pretty sure we'll we'll beat them up real good. But they are elves, so it's always best to be a little cautious when going and picking fights with elves. Incidents at the glassworks. Okay, well, hey, that's definitely uh, more dudes. That is definitely more dudes. As the reforms near completion, the Glass Lord's descent and anger have grown to precipitous levels. They have whipped our workers into a fury with propaganda and empty promises, and have organized strikes and protests at all our glassworks simultaneously. To attempt to restore peace, we sent officials to each glasswork to reiterate our stance for workers' rights, but made the grave error of providing them with a small armed escort. At our glassworks in Orcalivar, one of their guards overreacted and swung at a particularly threatening worker. Quickly, the protests evolved into a violent brawl, and our official barely escaped with their life. News of this incident spread, amplified by the Glass Lords, and now the protests have turned into open rebellion at every Glassworks. We must act swiftly to protect our industry and put these rebellions down. That is a lot of dudes. I will not lie to you. That is, in fact, a lot of dudes. And I forgot to let them get a tick of morale. So, that's not good. That is, in fact, what we would call not good. Uh, if I hadn't done that, then maybe we'd be able to... Prevent everything. Hey, there we go, though. That's self cleaning parchment. We needed that. Uh, it's very possible to remove text from a piece of paper given the right circumstances, but those circumstances are specific enough that removing text is the exception to the rule. This can make mistakes and other basic clerical errors very costly to fix. If statistics are reported wrong, you cannot just quickly revise them and expect to keep a tidy and legible document. It takes an entirely new document just to make sure everything is correct. 
The mechanists have devised a unique type of document in order to ease these woes. It is a piece of not quite paper. While it feels like the real deal, the texture of the material is such that it is possible to remove writing with a specialized brush so as to make sure that the te text is not removed accidentally and it will appear as if nothing was there at all. Eureka! All right, and that goes for records spoken or records spoken words. I either need to be 1700 or we got the self cleaning parchment. So information is the most valuable weapon in the world, and the accurate recording and sharing of information is fundamental for efficient commerce, research, and star statecraft alike. Rumor has it that Canorian artificers have showcased a new type of self cleaning parchment that promises to make bureaucratic processes far more cost efficient. Inspired by this, our scientists have developed their own variation. Paper capable of accurately and automatically transcribing anything said aloud in the immediate vicinity, from spycraft to the rapid recording of dictated notes and speeches, the possibilities are endless. We only need to develop this prototype into a working model. We get plus 10% trade steering until the end of the game. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Alright, well, let's just uh, clean up these rebels here. There we go, get all of that unseized. You guys can go back to drilling. Same thing with you, get back up there. Make sure you're back to drilling. We could take tech early. I don't think we're gonna do that though. Uh, just to double check, I do have all of this in the correct, right? Yeah. Does this tell me I need to develop anything specific? No. So we can kind of use these points however we see fit now. And I think war is going to be a great opportunity to move further into Bulwar and kind of secure our trade and bring our trade up from uh, Bulwar into Bahar and use this to make even more money. But that is going to do it for today. I would like to thank you all for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.